Hey everyone, in the last video we created our Bazel workspace and we created some sample packages. These packages didn't do too much, they just used the gen rule to write some text to a file. Today we're going to do something a little bit more useful. We're going to create a new package and we're going to build a Python library and then we're going to consume that library from another Python project which is going to run a Flask application. And we're going to do all of this from within the mono repo. So the first thing we need to do, if you remember before, workspace.bazel is used to bring a bunch of things into our mono repo. So anything we need from the outside, we should define this in workspace.bazel to bring this into our mono repo. So today we're going to be using something called rules Python uh, to work with our Python packages. So rules Python actually currently already ships along with Bazel, um, but in the future, it seems like this is gonna be migrated. So we should use this just in case in the future, it doesn't come along with Bazel anymore. So here we can see some instructions to get started. It tells us here to add this to our workspace file, and this is gonna give us the newest version of rules Python. So we're gonna paste that in. You can see here that this isn't very easy to work with. We don't have any syntax highlighting or anything with these Bazel files. We can enable that in Visual Studio Code by using the Bazel extension. We can enable that here, and straight away you see this makes our Bazel files much easier to work with. So now we can see here we're using the HTTP archive rule and we're loading in rules Python. So we should have rules Python in our mono repo now. So next we're going to define our new package. We're going to create a new folder called calculator. Inside this folder, we're going to create a couple of files. First of all, we have build.bazel to define this directory as a Bazel package. Next, we're going to create our source code, which is going to be in calculator.py. And then we're going to create a test file, which is going to be called calculator test.py. So I think this is all that we need for now. We have these three files. So the first thing we're going to do is write our source code. The source code is going to be very simple. So we're just going to create a class called calculator. And inside this class, we're going to have one method, which is called add. takes two parameters, x and y, and you might have already guessed that it's just gonna return the sum of these, like that. So this is our simple class. Now inside build.bazel, we're going to try to build a library out of this class. So if we go back over here to the rules, we can see that there is actually some better documentation over here in over in build.bazel and it's here, we can see we have a couple of examples. So we have a few rules here. We have py binary, py library, py test, and py runtime. These are pretty self-explanatory. So first of all, we're going to build a library. So we're gonna be using py library. And there should be an example of using py library. So it looks like they don't actually provide an example of py library, but it is quite simple. So all we need to do is use py library and we need to give this target a name. We're just gonna call it calculator. We need to give it a list of sources. So we just have one source file here and it's called calculator.py. And then we need to set some visibility. So let's actually just comment this out for now and use the, the default, but we're gonna come back to that in a minute. So next we're going to write our test target, which is gonna use py test. And I'm guessing they have some better documentation for this. Yeah, so they have an actual example here. So we can see that py test takes a source file, which is your actual Python test file, and it takes a list of dependencies. So let's do that. So we have py test. We're just going to call this calculator test. 
and it's going to take a source file which is going to be a calculator test.py and it's going to take dependencies so right here we're going to list out our dependencies we're going to be really explicit and we're going to say that we are going to depend on projects calculator and we're going to depend on this library which is called calculator so from our test we could actually just import calculator.py but we're going to try to consume this library as if we were another project in the monorepo and we were using that so that's why we're passing in the dependency like this and we're actually going to use the the built library so now inside calculator test we're going to import unit test which comes along with python and we're also going to import from projects dot calculator dot calculator and we're going to import calculator which is our calculator class that we defined here so we're just going to write a simple test class so we're going to say class test sum unit test dot test case and here we're just going to define one test which is test sum and here we're just going to instantiate a new calculator and we're just going to assert equal that if we use our calculator to add one and two we should end up getting three let's just save that and write this at the bottom if name equals main so this is just how we're, we're going to run our test unit test dot main cool so that's all of the code for this library now we have the actual library code here we have our test class and we have our two targets so let's just run this now and see if it works so we're going to run basil test and we're testing inside projects calculator and let's just run all of the tests there even though there's just one target and let's see if this works so this is the first time that i'm running a basil command since i added some stuff to the workspace so it's going to be downloading some things um and this the next time we run this it's not going to take anywhere near as long because it's also going to have cached the test so we can see here it passed 0 0.4 seconds we can run it again and we can see it's actually coming from cache if we make a change to this file so we're not going to change much we're just going to add an extra new line we run our test it's going to run it again not from the cache and let's just make it fail to show that this test is actually working so we can see that now we get this failure we can look at the log here and we can see that assertion error three does not equal four nice so let's bring this back to three to make our test pass and run it and we can see again every time we run it it's going to come from the cache now so now let's get started with our second project so let's create a new folder and let's just call it my python app so here again we're going to have our build.bazel file we're going to have our main.py file and i guess that's it we won't write any test targets for this one so let's just quickly write our main.py and not worry too much about what's going on here cool so this is our simple flask application we're going to use flask and we're going to use the library that we wrote to bring all this together and bring it in so now we've realized that we're going to need a dependency here but let's just try to run our application first of all so before we were using py library and py test here we're going to use py binary because we're actually going to be running this so this is what we're going to be using py binary so we're just going to call it main and it's actually going to use the source of main.py and again we're going to have some depths but we don't actually know quite what they are yet i guess we know one of them is going to be our project calculator calculator 
So we know we're going to be using our calculator library. And we also know we're going to need a flask. But let's wait a minute and see. So let's just do bazel run projects my Python app and let's run main. That's one thing about um, run targets. So we couldn't, for example, um, do this. So we can't, we basically can't run. Um, this is actually a, a different error, but we're going to sort that now. So this is to do with the um, visibility. So we can't actually, um, we haven't made the calculator library visible from this project. So there's a couple of different things we can do here. We could either make the visibility, we could say that it is um, completely public. I think this is what we need to do, but I can check over here. Yes, yeah, so we can use visibility public like that. So if we do this now, it's gonna get past that error. Um, so visibility public, this is just meaning that it's visible to any project inside the monorepo. We could also um, give it some defined labels that we want this to be visible to, but let's just leave it public for now. So we can see now the error that we're getting is that there's no module named flask. And this makes sense because we haven't brought in this third party dependency yet. So if we go back here, we know we're gonna need a dependency flask, but we just need to figure out how to bring that in. In rules Python, there should be something here called uh, requirements. So it's gonna be something like this. So this is how we install um, pip dependencies. So we see here in our workspace, we're gonna be using a Python rule pip install, and we're gonna point that to our requirements.txt file to bring in our dependencies. So let's do that now. Over in our workspace, we've already um, brought in rules Python. Now we're going to load one of the rules from rules Python called pip install. And we're going to just name this um, our Python depths. And now we need to point it to our requirements.txt file. So the um, recommended way to do this would be to create a third party um, project in here. And this is gonna have a build.bazel file to define this as a Bazel package. And then we're just gonna create our requirements.txt file here. So we know here we're gonna be using Flask and let's just say version 2.0.2, .2, which I think is the a recent version. We're gonna save that and we're gonna save our workspace file. And now back in our my Python app, the build file, we need to actually bring that requirement in and find out how to use it as a dependency. So to do that, we're going to load and we're gonna load the at Python depths workspace, which this name matches up with, in our workspace, we defined this Python depths. So we're going to use Python depths and requirements. This is all over in the documentation, or it should be here. Yeah, so we can see here, they call it my depths, I called it um, Python depths and we're gonna use this. And then we can just use a uh, requirement here and pass in the name of the dependency. So let's just use this, and this is gonna be Python depths. And this gives us the requirement function, so we can just pass in requirement, and it is flask like that. So before we were getting this no module name flask error, if now I try again, let's see. So the first thing that should happen here is it should try to install from the workspace. It should try to install um, our Python depths and then it's going to try to run the application. 
So you can see there, it actually did, first of all, it, so the issue here is that I forgot to change the path to the requirements. So this should be third party and it is just inside there. So let's try again. So now you can see it's loading my Python app and it should be um, running that. Let's take a look back in main.py and see what's happening. So I think I just forgot this, but let's leave it out for a second just to show you that we could do something like print hello, just to show that our Python app is actually running. You can see hello. So what we need to do is name main like that. Let's leave the print in. And this is actually running our um, our Python, our Flask application now. So we can click here and there is actually an error, but I'll bring this over. So there was an internal error. Hello did not return a valid response. So I actually forgot to do the return message like that. We can stop our app, we can start it again, refresh. And now you can see every time we refresh the page, we get new random numbers generated and our calculator library is used to add those together and return that response. Nice. So let's just remove this now. So let's just discuss a little bit about what we actually did here. And let's start with workspace.bazel. So first of all, we brought the Python rules into the project. We're then going to use the pip install rule to install some dependencies from this third party package where we defined flask. This needs a build.bazel file. So it is a bazel package. And then we created our library, which is our calculator. It's a simple calculator library. And we also wrote some test targets for that. We made the visibility completely public. So this can be used in any other package throughout the project. We created a Python app and we gave it two dependencies, one from in the monorepo and one from outside that we installed with pip a minute ago. And we need to load this um, to be able to use that dependency. So that's that's everything um, all together. We now have build, we now have a couple of different build targets. You remember we had the two projects before. So we actually have three different build targets. We should also have a single test target like that. And we also have the binary target, which we can use Bazel run to actually run that. Like so. Nice. Hopefully um, this video was useful for you. A couple of things just to note. Um, so by default, this is actually using our system version of Python, our interpreter comes with the system. Rules Python by default looks in your path um, to find a Python interpreter and it's gonna use that. The, the best thing to do to make your monorepo, I guess the word is, word is called hermetic. Um, so complete and airtight, you should try to make your monorepo hermetic, which means that it's basically everything's reproducible um, no matter who is using the monorepo, we'll be using the same version of Python. So probably what most people would actually do in this case would be they would actually, inside the workspace.bazel, they would download a Python interpreter here and it would be used within the project to build and run any Python applications, any tests. Um, so we might take a look at doing that in another video, but for now this works. Um, this is a very simple application, so it shouldn't have any issues. Another few things that I want to look at is using GitHub Actions um, to build and run tests for your monorepo whenever you create PRs. Um, and also, I'm going to take a look at another language next time, which is Golang. I'm going to create some projects in here, which are Golang, so we can truly say that we have multiple languages in this monorepo. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.